So when you have a man who looks like my husband, suffering from what he's suffering from, when you've lost all your friends, when you've lost your job, when you've lost your humor, you have to somehow exist. And I needed to figure out how to exist with this new man in my life. Once I knew that he was a child, I thought, well, how do I, how do I best interact with you? And I was doing what was socially correct initially. I was playing the brain games. I was playing crossword puzzles. I was having him write in a journal every day because I tell you, that's what you're supposed to do to keep the brain function happening. And he was doing this, but not happy about it. I think he was hoping I'd go back to work. So when my granddaughter was staying with us, she had a little doll, and the doll was just one of those little baby dolls. And she was, had her grandpa sitting outside at the cabin, holding this little doll, rocking this doll back and forth. And I went out to chastise her, to say, what are you doing with your grandpa? Don't treat him like that. He could hardly get down, let alone get up. And, and she says, but Nanny, he's having fun. I said, Lexi, he can push you on the swing. He can play catch with you. All the things, you know, I thought were socially acceptable. And I turned around and looked at Don, and he was humming this little song with this, with this little doll in his hand. And I have never seen him happier. And that moment, I did a 360 degree turn. And I thought, you know what? I don't know what studies have been done but that isn't working for frontotemporal dementia. We need to do what is stage appropriate. If it can be age appropriate too, boy, that, that's terrific. But the most important thing is stage appropriate. Once I figured that out, we started doing some of these things and we'll, we'll show you some of them, but we were still having such a problem with his sons. His sons are grown sons and they didn't want to see Don playing with the toys. They kept saying to him, come on, Dad, just sit down. Come on, come on, Dad, you can just sit down. And I said, he can't sit down. He'll sit down if you give him something to do. Can you imagine yourself saying to an 18-month-old, come on, Sally, just sit down. Come on, you can just sit here. We're going to chat. We're going to have fun. But you just sit and be a nice little girl all the time. It doesn't work. If you want a toddler to be behaving, you have to give them something on the plate. You have to give them some sort of interaction. So that's what we, what we are now doing with this active engagement. We are interacting at the stage that resident, in this case, my husband is. We developed it for frontotemporal. It now is a program that anyone in long-term care benefits from. If they're a higher functioning resident, you know what, they become a teacher helper and they help the person uh, design whatever is being designed. If they're a um, severe cerebral palsy or another Ill disease like that, we have the teacher helpers help stimulate them. Because you and I, and, and you probably wish you didn't get 300 stimuli daily, but you and I get 300 stimuli daily. And on those exam days, you probably get more than that. Whereas a dementia resident typically gets 40 stimuli daily. So when you do the math, that's a reduction in stimuli by 187%. Sorry, by 87%, 87%. yes. So that's reducing the stimuli by 87%. Think of yourselves in school. Think of yourselves with Miss Hunter. If she reduced the stimuli she gave you by 87%, besides sleeping in your seats every class, not learning anything, what God gave you between your ears would start to diminish because you wouldn't be using it. In schools, when children are at home, as teenagers, what did we as parents do? Stimulate and give you everything that we possibly could. So why, when a person's losing those abilities, do we decide, huh, let's just not stimulate. Let's make the two most important things in your life be putting a bib on and waiting an hour for supper and watching TV, of which we can't even understand anyways. Now tell me why that's okay, because it's not. And that's why we started this program. 
So I'm going to let Steve tell you a little bit about the program and then we'll just sort of keep going back and forth talking about it. Thank you, Donna. Excellent. When I first went into a nursing home with Donna, we checked it out. Uh, I walked into the nursing home. This was a locked unit called uh, Memory Lane. There's 12, I work in it. There's 12 beds. And I looked, and there was just, the people were, here's what they were, like this. I walk in now, six months later, I walk into the place, and I say, good morning, and they just go, woo! They're, they're just, they're alive. They're happy to see me, because they know I'm going to interact with them. I'm going to do something. They'll build stuff for me. And they love it, because they know what happens is that they work their minds by playing with toys. They sleep better. They sleep all night. They're happy. They don't get agitated. When you give them drugs, what happens is they, they lose their legs and, and then they fall or break their hips or whatever, break the leg, and they get agitated. So then they just give them drugs. They said, no, what we can do, we use toys to stimulate them. And you know, this works. We found out now it works 110%. Give me an example of what happened one day. I'm in, I was working my pod and just simple pins here and I, I was working my pod I thought, well, I'm thinking, you know, I'll go down to Donna's pod and, and take a look and see what's happening there. So I walk in and I just, and I bend over to one of the tables and all of a sudden I feel a, a tremendous pinch on my butt. I mean, like, wow. I just went, woo! This lady walks around, that's all she does is pinch. That's all she does. So we thought this developed this. And then what you do, you just put it on people's, you know, on people's shirts or whatever, you know, and she could pinch without her on this board. And now that eliminates from pinching other people now. See, that's one way of doing it. So uh, I, I that works. So now she, she's happy because she's doing this now instead of pinching people who are reaching out. And so young Mark stayed there for three weeks. Oh, man, my butt. It hurt. <laughs> Another thing we do is we have these, we have the school, the Carleton High School, which Donna thought for years, make these for us. And I get the plywood for nothing. The lumberers give it to us. They donate bolts, nuts and bolts. And what they do, I said, okay, I give it to a resident. I said, could you help me with this? Could you maybe clean this? This board is dirty. So we'll take the nuts and bolts off the washers. They take them all off. They, they wipe the board clean, you know, because they've got all day, right? So then they start putting the bolts on. I don't help, help them. I just ask them to do it for me, you know? And they do it. And they just, it takes them maybe two hours to get this done. We've got about 75 of these made. And they work 100% for, for the residents right, tremendously well. Would you like to speak? When, when we're talking about these types of things, what we're doing is we're respecting the obsession of the, of the patient. Um, my husband's obsession is picking things up. So when I have him work with puzzles, and I've got all the puzzles over here, when I have him work with puzzles, what I would do is dump the puzzle just dump it, right? And he has to then physically get up and down, up and down, and pick it up. And he wants to be picking things up. People ask me, how do you know what stage they're at and what, whoops, what type of puzzle should we be using with them? So I always, I guess, I guess it's maybe the high school in me or whatever from teaching, I, I always start with a puzzle like this. Now, if you notice, this puzzle has a border that has design on the border. So anyone who's challenged, they hopefully can see that, gee, if I add some of this design to, to the border, I can, I can make it fit. There, can I, okay. there we go. So now my husband can't do these puzzles anymore. Initially he could, and my kids, they were upset that I was giving him these um, Spider-Man puzzles and Tinkerbell puzzles. They're upset because this is their dad. And how dare I? And I said, kids, he doesn't care if it's a hunting puzzle, because he was a great hunter. If it's a hunting puzzle or if it's a Spider-Man puzzle, he cares that he can get it done and do it. So when we go into the homes, we have to assess gee, what level are they at? So this type of puzzle would be for someone who really has some lots of shaking happening. And again, I don't know what anyone suffers from. When you guys are working, you'll know what the ailment is, but I don't. So I, I can just go by, by what they're um, showing me. So this lady came over to me 
and I was working with puzzles like this, and I said, would you like to help me? I'd never met this woman. I was just out in the rotunda. My husband was helping me put some stuff away. We'd just done a presentation. So she wheeled up, and I gave her some of these puzzle pieces, and oh, she was struggling, and she was trying to do it, and I put the puzzle on her lap. She was in a wheelchair. And so I thought, oh, too difficult because of the movement. So then I gave her a puzzle like this, and she worked and worked at that. I left, and she's still working at the puzzle, so I just went to the nurse and I said, could you make sure that puzzle gets to her room? Now, when her family went in, they, again, because of society, right, they're upset that it's a puzzle like this. So I told the nurses, the family will probably be questioning, give them my phone number, and I can explain why that's the puzzle that their mom or grandma needs. Once I explained it, showed them how all this works, they so got the idea. So when, when we're trying to pull things together for residents, there's a whole gamut of, of abilities that you need to work with. And so you need to have lots of different options for them. This one, th they, we respected the pinching. This one, we're respecting my husband's idea of picking up and, and needing to always tidy and get things right. When he's in long-term care, if ever he gets agitated or starts pacing because he's missing me, they take a puzzle, turn it upside down, and he's pacing, he sees it, sits down, whoosh, all the energy, all that negative energy goes right there. There's no risk for staff because we're taking care of it. We're allowing that obsession to have a home. And I challenge that every person will have something that will challenge that energy. And it's up to us to find it. For about six months, I worked in this unit. And there's 12 people. And there's three ladies that they are sort of stuck together. And I, I've tried everything with these ladies. So one lady one day would pick up this and insert blocks and pieces into that. Took her forever. But anyway, I said, you know, there's got to be more to this than that. So I took a ball, a beach ball, and I said, I walked over to Agnes and I said, Agnes, will you play ball with me? And she said, hmm. She looked at me as if she didn't speak, say anything. I said, would you catch a ball? <laughs> well, she didn't also. She says, would you throw it to me? So I gave it to her and I said, well, throw the ball to me. Well, she didn't know how to throw it. So I had to teach her how to throw the ball. And she eventually, about two minutes, she knew how to throw it. Then I said, would you catch the ball? She said, so I threw the ball. Of course, it fell right through her hands. So I said, no, you got to hold that together. So in about 10 minutes, into this, two other ladies that used to chum around with this lady joined us. And first thing you know, we start playing catch, okay? So we're playing catch, we backed up, I backed up a little bit each time, we played playing catch back and forth. So it, the day was done, and so the next time I come into my pod, and I, I call it the pod. So I come in and this, one of the ladies that works with the residents says to me, Stephen, I said, what did you do with those girls yesterday? He says, whoa, I thought I'd been in trouble. I said, what do you mean, what did they do? And he says, well, I, we have never ever seen them laugh or smile. I said, really? I said, I haven't seen that, but maybe you have. She said, what do you do? I said, well, you know, when you're done your work, you come and see what I do with them. Well, she couldn't believe it. She says, something as simple as a dirty little old beach ball could make the people laugh. These ladies never laughed for years, perhaps. It made them laugh and be someone, be somebody. And use them some energy so they could sleep better at night. And they slept good. They said they slept awesome every night after they did some exercises. And not doing scoot or whatever or puzzles, but doing something that would maybe they knew how to do, like this or building little blocks or playing with this here item as if it's a windmill. It's amazing how these little simplest things in life, remember, simplest things in life, how they work. We never even think of it in, in, in real life. It says, oh no, it can't be. What it does, it does work. We found out in over a year that we've been doing this, it works 140%. I, I'm, I mean, I believe in it because it's working. The people are happy, you know, so that's all we need to make them happy as, as they could be because, you know, their lifespan is not very long yet, and we don't make it as, as best we can for these people because they're human beings. They are really human beings. The care for a resident is only 50% of what they need. They need the cognitive stimulation as well as the physical needs. I just have one of those puzzles I, I, that still has the plastic on it, so those of you who couldn't see it when I was sort of trying to juggle with it. So again, you can see that as you take these pieces out, 
there's enough on the border to allow a person to know exactly how to fit it in. So that, that's why that type of puzzle is good. Um, my Don, he, he, you know what is good about him? He will try anything that I give him and he'll take great pride in doing it. So I asked him, I said, we've got all these little pieces. Could he make this flower for me? Sure he could, sure he could. He worked and worked and worked at it and this is his flower. <laughs> the reason I show you this is there is never a right and a wrong when you're working at this type of thing. There is only a completion or a degree of completion and it's always right. However, the, the resident does it, it is always right. So from here, we can then talk about circles. And I can ask if he can find any half circles. Now he couldn't understand any of that now. But back, back when, he could have. So you need to always remember that it's, the, it's in doing the project that is important, not in doing it right. This little log house, Steve made a, a really good job of doing this. Can our residents do that? Well, it depends on what they're suffering from but most of them could never make something this great. But you know what they can do is they can place these things one on top of another. If the resident can make a fence, that's what we make. If the resident can only sort these things, that's what we do, we sort. All of a sudden, playing with magnetic puzzles, how that is for, for the grown children to manage. They're now getting that this is healthy, but it's taken me a long, long time for them to understand that. And so whenever you are dealing with someone, remember, this is so much better than waiting for my meal. I've got an item here that it looks, the color coordination is not right, is it? Yeah, it's silly, but as long as they do it, as long as they put it together, it just, colors doesn't mean a thing. Because they think, you know, boredom is a disease of its own, boredom. These people is great. So if you don't get them active, what we're trying to do, they'll be so bored. Uh, it's just, there's no fun in life. There's, they have nothing to live for. You know, when we come in, they, they, they smile, they laugh. They, they want to hold out to us. They want to hang out to us and hold our hand. They're so happy to see because somebody's going to interact with them. So when they build something like that for me, I think, great, this is the greatest thing I've seen. Because look at that. I don't care about the colors, but they've done something. They're doing something with their mind. They're working. The money set that we took to Looks the homes. Real. And doesn't it look real? Our only um, sort of question mark with this money was we don't want any of the residents to get arrested trying to spend this in At Walmart, casino, you know, right because you're going on outings. And one of the girls today, we had a meeting before coming here, and she said, We know where all the money went. Here's this guy, and he's got a big wad, and he, he's taking money out of his <laughs> pocket. And so anyways, again, this is age and stage appropriate. My Don used to be a banker. So sorting money is real good. Sorting coins, he's not so good at that anymore, but he can pretty well get the, get the, the bills where they're supposed to be. So what I do is to, I found the best thing for him to take the longest is to sort beans. I buy these, th th you could eat them, they're okay. They're, they're edible, they're not cooked of course, but he will sort beans and you know he does a wonderful job. He sorts them and I said, no cheating now. And he will not cheat. He'll put the right colors in the right places. And it takes him three, four hours. So I have some time for myself then. I can read or do something else while he's doing this. He will not leave it alone. He will not leave it till it's finished. Till all this done, there's more than that into these proper places. He will, I mean, he will not leave it. Now, I, what I do with the money is I put him in the garbage bag, the coins and the bills, there's a lot more than that, and shake him up real well you know, the, in the big black garbage bag. And then Put him in a bowl and said, Don, would you sort this money up, please? Look, I look what I dropped it. I, the money's not sorted. And he just, like a banker, you know, I said, no cheating. He might put a five with a 20. He said, oh, no, oh, you're cheating. I'll do it all again. So he takes all the money out again and bang, 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 bang. In about two hours' time, he's got them all sorted. And it's amazing what the, how we keep, keep this man going. And he loves it. He just loves it. It's a passion of his. You know, and it's amazing how these little things make people tick, you know, daily. And he does it every day. This, another little toy that we have, my grandchildren enjoy it. Steve and I are driving to Calgary to take the grandchildren home. Uh, Don 
and the grandchildren are sitting in the back seat and I'm driving. And I said, okay, I want to see who can make a big long ladder and see who can count, go from the back seat to the front seat. And so the little ones are in car seats and Don's sitting between them and he's stealing all their things <laughs> because he wants to win. Like, like really, it's stage appropriate. And I've got two little ones crying. This thing's coming past my ear <laughs> and it's hitting the windshield. He was so happy. And the other kids, I would then give them um, something like this and say, try to make the letter O, try to make the letter T, try to make the letter E, B, whatever. And the little ones are doing that and Don just keeps stealing and stealing because he liked to be the winner. So when you have frontal temporal dementia, even though you've lost your reasoning, you've lost your judgment, he knows that nice feeling of being a winner. And doing this, he felt he was winning. Steve and I have been friends for years and years, so I had his support, I had my family support, but I certainly didn't have our neighbor or our friend support. We've now taught them and allowed them to enjoy playing a game. We've taught my neighbors that you know what, you have fun doing this too. And so now they will go and visit Dawn in respite and each neighbor has one particular toy that they're sort of, you know, king of the castle with and doesn't come out until that neighbor goes. So then it's special. But it took teaching it took my sort of starting to move away from Don interrupting with, interacting with his male friend and sort of like two kids in a sandbox, sort of giving them permission to play and for the other adult male to feel okay with it. I was so angry because I just wanted to say, buck up, if this were your husband, I would be there and the women were much better at being there than, than the men. But the men, they'd always say, so how's the, how's the, um, how's the, big, the big boy? How's the big, the big guy. guy today? And I, I, I just take him for coffee and find out for yourself Never how do. the big guy is. So <clears throat> when we started doing things like this, the male friends thought, okay, we can do that. If we can sort a ratchet set, they felt comfortable sorting a ratchet set. Again, this is stage appropriate and also age appropriate. They felt better about that. But Don <coughs> no longer can sort the ratchet set. We had to teach people that when you go to visit, the communication that you expect, I mean, it's not there. You get the odd yes, the odd no, that's all you get from Don. Yeah, family members would bring magazines. We can't read. We just went for an eye exam. You want to tell me how difficult that is? When you go for an eye exam and I'm saying to her like, I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this. And uh, you know, you have to adapt and good for that, that doctor. She really adapted and she was praising Don and five minutes would be the most he could concentrate and then she'd praise him and we'd get up and walk around. So you just need to know that we need to keep changing things up all the time and you need to give yourself permission to play as you would play with your two-year-old at home. You need to give yourself permission to do that and you need to give your patients that permission because society has sort of got us going over here and we need to pull it back. What works? So the resident who's, who's really has done nothing, they've been there for two or three years and have done nothing, they don't know how to get involved. There was one lady three years she'd been there, all she did was keep her little oxygen mask on and I went over to her and started rolling this back and forth and she caught it. Then we started doing other things. She's since passed on but we trained 90 students and every day for two weeks we were training these students and I knew exactly what that lady had been playing with for those full two weeks and the last day of training I just told one of the students, well go and get Agnes and this is what you do and she wasn't there. She had died. We were all so upset and the nurse came up to us and said she's had the best two weeks of her life. Every day she had someone like you guys playing with her and playing something different. So 
we knew that, that a good thing had happened. And she went from doing nothing to doing everything that you've seen here. There wasn't one thing that we would give her that she couldn't do. And the staff there said, she won't do a thing. She's never done a thing. Well, the reason she's never done a thing is because you haven't offered her something that she could do. So prefacing everything you do, mm. telling them, um, telling the residents that I need help, or school children are coming, or grandchildren are coming. Poker chips, both age and stage appropriate. Help me sort the poker chips. I have to keep an eye on the time here. So when they're sorting the poker chips, we're sorting, we're doing colors. Um, if they were of a higher um, level, you could do some adding with it. With the money, I used to have envelopes with people's names on it. And I'd say, Don, we're doing payroll today. And you know, there would be 10 envelopes with, with numbers on them. And he used to fill the envelopes. And really, he thought we were doing payroll. Then he just started stuffing the envelopes with any amount of money. And I knew, oh, OK, there goes, there goes that, that level. And now it's just sorting. It's just sorting it. So you're always changing and adjusting, because a resident will be at this level one day, <laughs> here the next, and there the, the, the next day. So you always need to adjust. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I have learned is every time Don goes into respite, he goes in at one level and he always comes out lower. And that's because he is not getting enough of this. He is getting some of it now because we've been working there for a year and a half. And boy, they see Don and they know, bring out the toys. And they see us and they see us working with 12 or 14 residents and everyone really enjoying it. So <coughs> it's starting, but it's not enough. And so when we get out there, when you guys get out there, and you're seeing uh, patients, you're wanting to write on your writing tablet, three cognitive engagements daily, one physical engagement daily, equally as important as whatever meds that person needs. Because would you want the meds or would you want something like this when you're there? I have something here to read that the staff, the working staff of these pods have written and they're in their own handwriting and they just, initialed it. It said here, one said, the residents need something to do other than sleep, eat, and watch TV. Um, KR. Brings the staff and residents closer together, giving them a fun social activity together. MR. Eliminates boredom. Boredom. Remember, boredom is a big disease of its own. Eliminates boredom. Good to do during downtime. Yeah, because they have a lot of downtime. Activities. Keep residents' mind, motor skills sharp, and it does. It helps them. I found that, you know, they say that the mind goes, I don't think so. We could bring it back maybe 10, 15 percent because I know they, they can do things. Uh, when, I, when I first started, they couldn't do this, build something for me. Now they can because it means that their mind is starting to come back a bit. They're learning some skills, and it's so important to have these people be active again. You know, it's, it's wonderful. They're human beings. Stimulation. Lots of people with dementia don't get their primary senses stimulated. And so you know what? This is sort of nice. Any way you slice it. This, rolling it up and down your arm, you'll see in a video later, uh, one of the gals, the one about the necklaces, who you could tell was higher functioning, she became my teacher helper. And there was a, uh, a severe um, cerebral palsy resident. and. This is the same day she was telling me, you know, have my grandchildren do it and they should be doing it on their own. I thought, well, I'm going to turn you into helper right now. So I gave her this ball and I said, that little gal over there, could you go and just roll this ball up and down her arm? And then I was thinking, holy man, I don't know that she's not going to stuff it in her mouth. Like, I don't know, right? So then I'm sort of working with residents here, but keeping a pretty close eye on Dorothy. And she just rolled this all over the, the resident's head and down the arm. Every day for 20 minutes, she does that. <coughs> We've had to replace this ball, I don't know how many times, because that's what she does. So she's feeling great about it, and so is the resident. And we have her do this, too. It's the same as running your fingers through your hair. Remember how we all still like that. I, st I really like it when it's a shaved head. I really like that feel. Anyways, you know how we like it? So if we like it, 
the residents like it. And so it's, it's just time to do some of those things. We're going to have to wrap right okay, away. Okay, I've got a few more to read here about the, what they have to say about what we're doing. They said the residents seem to feel a sense of self-accomplishment even though they only finish one small task, which is important. Even the small little thing they do is very important. I think they need more volunteers. This is all on the pods, but beneficially residents definitely benefit from it. And they do benefit. Uh, they, they notice it apparently. Residents that take part in the activities are more likely to have a good night's sleep. And isn't that something that they recognize that now? That they have a better sleep. Okay? But Donna and I received the ball on the two yard line, on our two yard line, and we are going against the wind, against a, a very negative defensive team. Negative. We're trying to propel the ball to the other side. Donna and I are working our butts off. We are working. We're, we're down to the one yard line, and it's third down, one yard to go for Tajon to win the game. And you know something? We need people like yourself, professionals like you, if you get in the health field, to help us get the ball across the goal line. To for the touchdown to win the game, okay? And we need you not to drop the ball. We, we need your help. Mm -hmm. We just gotta do it. Okay, thank you. <laughs>